Gold has taken a hit recently after a rally. So let's talk about the price, let's talk about some technologies, and let's talk about precious metals in general. Is now the time to buy or to sell? You came here for the truth. So let's get into this right away. $771 trillion worth of gold lies hidden in the oceans. Good luck getting it. So this article out of Forbes is quite interesting, in fact. Basically, they're trying to discuss these technologies that haven't quite come on board yet. And that is to take gold from the oceans. So there is a minuscule amount of gold available in the ocean. And if they develop a technology to basically go through and mill it, they would be able to reach $771 trillion estimated within the world's oceans. Nothing at this time has become available that would make it even close to worth it. But should they be able to do so, it would be very profitable. Of course, that would do something to the supply of gold, but nothing really is on the market as of now. I just found it interesting because I wanted to make a couple of points. Look at the Canadian oil sands when you see how expensive it is to get out of the ground. A lot of dirt, tons and tons of it, needs to be dug through and then refined to such a degree just to be able to get it out of the ground. Then you look at the operations, for example, in Brazil, where they go through tons and tons of rock in order to grind it down and to try to get this to become what they would need to then melt down into gold. We're talking about a powder that they get, but it's still profitable. So you need to look at any commodity as an individual, not as a whole, and understand that each of these different mines or processes, technologies are there, and each one has its own expenses, has its own liabilities, the debt that they carry, the prospects that they have for the future, and so forth. So the reason I bring this up is specifically to talk about that. I hope that uh, that was uh, somewhat interesting to you. Looking at this here, the Federal Reserve, all of our friends, of course, they have this meeting that perhaps at the time that you are watching this video, it's already over and done with. The Federal Reserve is expected to move forward with plans to sell some of its roughly $3.7 trillion worth of bonds and mortgage securities it amassed during the financial crisis. So it is expected at the end of the meeting to announce the plans that it's going to start selling these off and reducing its massive balance sheet. The only thing that has been supporting this stock market and everything else has been the central bank balance sheet. Should they get rid of this, it would be an absolute disaster. Are they planning to create that disaster? Well, we'll see. If other central banks come in to basically pick up the pieces, well, then we might not have such a big problem. We are seeing that already, but they would have to do so to the same degree that the Federal Reserve is pulling out at. We're also seeing the fact that the Federal Reserve has been incapable of doing anything that they say on time. They engage in something called Operation Twist, which provided absolutely no benefit to the market during the time of Operation Twist. And then we had QE3, which did actually provide some sort of, um, let's say, revival to the market because you pump new blood into it and, of course, uh, the zombies will uh, remain active. Looking at the precious metals in relation to this, we can see that wherever there is tensions, wherever there is uncertainty, you will see precious metals rising. And that is always bullish for other commodities as well, or some commodities. And you'll notice that when we look at precious metals in general, they seem to be a safe haven. So people run to that. But what's happening in the uh, East, not allowed to talk about that here anymore, but uh, over there in the East, there's always tensions. But there's no tensions for a few days, all of a sudden, gold takes a dive. And that's really what's happening. It's funny because uh, the market seems to have quite um, powerful amnesia very, very quickly. 
All right, looking at this, the dollar index has stated its course of strengthening and consolidation in the past few trading sessions. And although the meeting of the Fed will be a close watch for interest rate comments, talks of the balance sheet normalization will also be an important point to look for. Uh, gold prices are expected to trade lower on Tuesday. Gold at the time of this uh, video was trading around the 1300 mark, and that is up from where it had been, you know, in the previous months. So we can see that this is all a result of the tensions that have been building. But the Federal Reserve, if they start to pull back on their balance sheet, then everything is just fine, right? Well, that's what they're suggesting. Look at what has happened with interest rates. 2015, they decide, okay, we're going to raise interest rates. But they said that in 2014, they said it in 2013, and so on. It took them years just to get it a little bit up. And now it has taken approximately two years to get it up approximately 1%. To increase the interest rates by 1%, it took two years. So if it's going to be at that rate, we are going to take a long time. Then you add in the bank uh, trying to get rid of their balance sheet. This is just going to spell a disaster for the future. I don't know how they're ever going to get away with this. We'll see. Gold prices could likely find support at its $1,300 uh, handle over the next uh, few months with a bearish trend towards our 20, uh, $1,250 year end. It basically just talks about what could happen here. If interest rates rise, that would obviously be seen as a strength in the economy and this and that. I don't know what's going to happen exactly, but you know they could certainly continue this for a long period of time but the bubble's just going to continue to expand because it's not going at a rate that it should be the federal reserve all central banks in fact react too slow they don't react enough and you see the same thing happening over and over again it doesn't surprise me of course that's just the way they are so now let me cover this here very quickly all three main U.S. stock indexes ended all-time highs on Tuesday as the Federal Reserve policymakers began a two-day two policy meeting in which they expected to finalize the details of their plan to begin slowly shrinking the bank balance sheet $4.5 trillion. Okay, that's how much do they have. How much do they expect to be able to unload onto this market? Sure, they might be able to get rid of some of it. But $4.5 trillion worth? I don't think so. Even half of that? No, not going to happen. Not without a disaster anyway. So let's quickly get into my points here. Is now the time to buy gold or is now the time to sell? What about silver? Well, first let's talk about precious metals in general. I generally regard gold and silver to be your primaries, by far, in fact. You would have a portfolio of gold and silver. I would say as much as 90% of that, maybe even more, to be within gold and silver. Platinum and palladium are great. I'm not going to deny that, but such a small percentage because we really don't know what will happen to them. It's sort of, you know, and I don't necessarily look at the price as a, as a you know, what to do about the activity here. I look at it as gold and silver have been money before. They have the most history behind them. And I think that we should play it off like that. It doesn't give, you know, platinum and palladium, you know, you know, the short end of the stick. I just look at it that way. So that's my point on that. And uh, silver and gold comparing the two. Uh, a lot of people put heavy influence on silver because it has the higher upside potential. I think that industrially, silver is more important. And we could see that the increase in technology, the more pervasive technology becomes, that silver becomes worth more. However, it tends to lag behind gold. So whenever there is a... Uh, boom, we can see that gold goes first, then it becomes too expensive. That starts to push silver uh, to become more expensive as a result. So it sort of trades behind, lags behind that. But what is happening with the price of gold and silver? Most of the people, probably 95% of people that own physical precious metals, do not sell their physical precious metals. What we are seeing is paper. We are seeing futures contracts and we are seeing ETFs. This is not real. This is not 
an actual precious metal in any way. It's a piece of paper. And they're able to sell that onto the market. They don't even own it. They are doing all these kinds of nefarious acts, which cause the price to fluctuate up or down. I think that most people in general who are getting into physical precious metals will just hang on regardless. So we don't need to really think about the price. That's the way I look at it. Does that mean you should have 100% in precious metals? I personally don't agree with that, but if you want to, I mean, by all means, a lot of people have 100% in stocks. So why not 100% in precious metals? I personally don't like that idea of 100% in anything. I think that we can do better than that. I think that we can diversify out as much as possible, even within the asset class itself. If you have precious metals, if you have gold, do you want to just have one type of gold? Do you want to just have a particular coin or do you want to have 10 different types of gold? I think that's much smarter. I think that some will have a premium on them. Others won't do as well. But ultimately, you'll be able to diversify within the asset class. And I think that is the smartest thing that you can do. Now as a time for buying. Now, I don't really agree with timing on the buying at all. Um, if people think that tensions are going to ease a little bit, then you're, you're going to see the price come down on gold. But I don't really look at it like that. I look at it like the more Eastern cultures tend to look at it, and that is you take gold, you pass it down from generation to generation, and you're able to pass wealth down. That's the way it is. How many stocks have been around since, you know, let's say uh, 3,000 years ago? Well, no, that's really not the case, obviously. I mean, we're talking about two different things. But what I'm trying to say is that you don't need to worry as much about trading and the uh, complexity of it all with equities when you're going to give it to your kids. Do they know what they're doing? You can just give gold coins or high carat jewelry as these Eastern cultures do, and they pass down wealth. That may not be for you, that's okay, but I'm just saying that that seems to be the way to go, passing down wealth. Others use real estate. They have uh, portfolios of real estate that are being managed by other people, so the uh, generation that they pass it on to doesn't need to necessarily worry about anything. I just seem that uh, what what we will look at with precious metals in general is that the price is less significant than most people really um, most people talk about anyway. I'm not one of those that, that really chases price. I simply look at it as a way to pass wealth down. But once again, diversification is key. I think that we can own a lot of different assets, even if they're very small amounts. I assure you, you don't need to have a lot of money to own some assets. That's very important to note. Even a few dollars would allow you to buy into some silver and um, you can get into real estate investments for just a few thousand dollars. I assure you on that as well. I've consulted many people talking about this i've uh, wrote about it in my uh, latest book so that's all i will say for today i see a lot of infighting in between those who are into precious metals and those who are into cryptocurrencies and there's other people who like both i don't get involved in either i simply look at it and i talk about what i see i'm just giving my opinion on my observations and then i take the historical information i take the data try to put put that all together, piece it all together. I hope you do appreciate that. If you do, then please give me a thumbs up. And last but not least, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. This channel has been, you know, under fire uh, as of recent, you know, recently, and, and you've seen that, you know what's going on, the tactics that they're using. So I do appreciate when you subscribe to the channel, when you give me a thumbs up, when you comment below, when you help me out on uh, Steemit and, and other uh, platforms that I have as well. So that's all for this video. Take care.